Hey everybody, I'm James here at Wargaze Illustrated. I'm the project manager and I'm here today doing this video with my colleague, Ship. Say hi, Ship. <whistles> now, so this is actually a, a pretty new kit from Sarissa. We managed to grab their in-house built and painted version, which I think has been done by Gary Faulkner. Um, not fully rigged, but looking extremely impressive. We've just placed it on one of our boards because it's rare we get the chance to have something this impressive next to me. It's usually a tiny figure or Callum. And, you know, I don't think Callum would mind me saying that this ship's a lot more visually exciting than him. So, I'm not an expert in this period of naval stuff. I did, for a Wargames Illustrated article, put this tiny little bomb catch kit together a while back. I think it was in 2020, during some kind of lockdown. This took me two hours to rig, and it's like the size of a pea. So I dread to think how long this one will take, but maybe it'll be quicker because it's bigger. But the thing that really fascinates me about this as a kit builder is that this TARDIS-like rectangle here is somehow going to become this. So let's get the, get the film off, inhale some of the burnt wood smell, and see how this thing goes together. All right, so I'll get my trusty assistant, Joe, to slowly move this safely out of the way. Beep. Beep, 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 beep. You get the idea. Okay, and uh, let's let's take the wrapper off and see what's inside. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. <laughs> so you got your your first page, which shows the built ship, and then we're straight on to the instructions. So step by steps of that quite a few pages, um, but yeah, instructions. And then we're on to sheet after sheet of MDF stuff. Um, I'll get Joe to do some close-ups of some of these ones. Uh, these ones look to be the basis for all the cannons that you can put to fire from your broadsides. Uh, you also you have the option of buying metal cannons to go with the kit. I think. There's 24 in here, I believe. I'll do a count and Joe can confirm or deny whether that's the case. Uh, so that's your cannons. And then I guess the rest of it is gonna be your ship. Okay, so this is an MDF part. Um, looks to be the deck, I think. And some of the other detail that goes around. It's the usual sort of thing you'd expect from Sarissa, quite nicely etched. Stinking to high heaven of bonfires and all that business. Okay, uh, and we're onto the gray board, which I know editor Dan really dislikes this stuff. He wishes everything could be MDF, but uh, this will be for detail on the sides of the ship. Got the little openings for your cannons to come through as well on there. So that's that one. Okay, and another sheet of board here. And I think these have got the gun port flaps on there as well. So they'll cover over your broadsides. All right, and we're on to some heavy duty detailing elements here, lots of different shapes. It looks like you've got a few bits for the masts as well. Obviously with the size of this versus the height that the masts are gonna be, there's an interlocking way that those all go together and they kind of stagger back and forward. And we go on M more masts, more bits. I think it's gonna get quite repetitive soon, so I won't do full detail on everything. I'll just point out some extra interesting bits. All right, I think We've got some bits here that maybe, oh, maybe I said the other thing was the deck. I think this is actually the deck, which means that, that previous bit was possibly the quarter deck. Um, and I think some of these are the parts for the quarter deck as well to build that up at the back of the ship. Oh, but now I'm even more confused because this also looks like it could be the same. I guess there's multiple levels to the ship. So, and they're all removable as well, which uh, as you can see on the, on the finished one here. So when you're building, obviously you're gonna have to follow the instructions carefully and just make sure you put everything in the right place. Right, on some more detailing, and I think some of these are to go around the edges of the ship, build things up. Oh, numbers, right. I hadn't actually spotted that to begin with, but this is the first sheet that I've seen that has numbers on it, and the rest haven't. That's, that's kind of tricky. That will obviously make it more difficult to follow the instructions and put the right bits where they should be. Oh, but onto more ship ribs here, and these ones also have numbers. So you're all right for that bit, but everything else is going to be a bit of a challenge. All right, and on to the last one, and crikey. Um, I'm guessing this isn't just a selection of Baymax's heads. Hello. Um, probably things for the rigging instead. All right, so that's all the different parts that come in the pack and will ultimately make the ship. Let's do a quick count of those. We'll put it up on screen. And 
what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring this model in properly and just show you how it goes together, how some of the parts uh, can be separated for storage or just other possibilities that you might want to do with the kit. And here it is, um, would work as a frigate or a ship of the line. And although you could probably play some large scale naval stuff if you were a crazy person, I think for many of us, if we get this, we're probably going to have it sitting in a port by the side of our gaming table, just adding that visual impressiveness. And it is very impressive, even though this one's not fully rigged and it doesn't have uh, sails on it, there is some rigging on the front bit, which instantly scares me with how complicated that's going to look and carrying over. But even though it's quite a big kit, Sarissa have pretty wisely made sure that it's quite, what's the word, take apartable. I guess we'll, we'll paint in that one. Uh, so the masts can all come off, quite easily slide out, but they actually hold quite firm at the same time. Uh, these all come off, I won't take them all off. Then you can remove the quarter deck to see what's in there. So there's that. And then you can also remove the forecastle and see what's in there. And if that amount of play functions, as our good friends at LEGO would call it, doesn't satisfy you, you can also completely remove the top deck, which is a little bit awkward. You just have to be careful because these front bits pinch. Um, you also have to watch out that these don't snap off, which we'll admit we've done about 50 times already. And then you've got more access to the lower cannon deck down there. And of course, these ones here, we don't actually have the cannons built for this, but that's uh, something that you can do yourself. All right, and just put it back together. Everything lines up pretty well. You sometimes have to find that sweet spot. The masts actually go in very nicely. And I'll just spin it around to show off the other side with the uh, broad side ready to fire. So here it is. The finished ship is definitely impressive. Um, it also looks like it would be quite interesting to build. I'm not sure if fun is the word that I would use. It's very tall, it's very big. It's gonna be imposing on whatever tabletop you put it on. And it's a real project. I think it costs just shy of £100 for the kit with all the cannons. It's a little cheaper if you get it without. And maybe I've got a masochistic streak, but I'm actually tempted to have a go at building this myself. Uh, it doesn't help that I'm currently reading a book called Imperial Twilight, which is all about the Opium Wars, so there's some crossover there. But the one thing that's really worrying me is the rigging. There are no instructions for the rigging in the sheets that you get from Sarissa, so that's going to require some research. I guess you could leave it without, but it's going to look better with it done. All right, so I'm back for you mere, mere moments later. But for me, a couple of days later, I said I might have a go at building it, and I did. So here I am with my new co-host, Ship2, and this is my own, my precious. It was a very fast build experience because we decided to do it for an article for an upcoming issue of the magazine, all about techniques for MDF building and some of my tips and tricks. I have built quite a lot of MDF kits. So I foolishly built this in a day. She came together quite well. Uh, I had a few missteps along the way, largely down to my rushing. I wouldn't recommend doing that. The instructions are actually very good. Um, I wish that the boards were marked with the numbers that corresponded with those instructions. That would be the finishing touch that would really help things along. But the, the parts look similar to what they do in the exploded diagrams in those instructions. So you'll, you'll do pretty well with that. There's some really ingenious build elements on this. I thought the, the way the masts went together was actually really clever. And the whole ship, it's not too tricky. Um, you need to be confident about applying quite heavy pressure at times to get parts to slot together and watch out for some of the other bits, some of the ribs of the ship that go along, quite prone to uh, snapping if you knock them. The gray board went on quite nicely. It, it just comes together in a really fun way. Should you have a go at this? If you want an ambitious hobby project, then I really think you should. I have had more enjoyment putting this together than I have pretty much any hobby project for a couple of years. And even though it's intimidating at the start and intimidating now before I paint it, it's it's just something that looks so impressive. I'm excited to have it. It's it's here in my house, but eventually it'll go back to the War Games Illustrated office. Uh, I need to get my rattle can out, give it a spray with black, and then get busy painting it. Well, if you want to test out your sea legs, this is a project that I really recommend. My article in Morgan's Illustrated 416 will really be helpful for that and for any MDF kits. So that'll either be out in a bit if you're watching this video as soon as it goes up, or it might be on the shelves or in the Morgan's Illustrated vault by the time you watch this. Uh, in the meantime though, don't forget you can subscribe to our channel. Uh, 
ring the bell to get alerts about whenever we put a new video online. We try and get at least a, a video or two up every week. And yeah, I'll see you again soon and hopefully move on from this MDF madness. This video has been brought to you by WI Prime, Wargames Illustrated Magazine's online members club. View more videos or find out more about WI Prime by following these links.